Yeah, Coach, I was just wondering with, uh, you know, the being down to eight players a couple times, what, uh, what are practices like? It's got to be a challenge to even go five on five at times. Practices are interesting. They are absolutely interesting. We just actually walked off the court and we have some coaches um, trying to participate. I guess trying is the only word I can use. Um, so yeah, we're probably not giving the best look we can when we're preparing um, for opponents. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. We're doing a lot more breakdown stuff, a lot more skill development stuff, and not that there's anything wrong with that. It just it definitely is different when you're talking about trying to go live, trying to get you know full offensive looks against full defense, and and same with obviously preparing for what the other team's going to bring to us. How do you feel like the players themselves are kind of handling these? You know, obviously a very bizarre situation that you guys find yourself in. How do you feel like they're kind of handling uh, everything that's been thrown at them this year? Honestly, I have to applaud the way they've handled all of it. There's been so many things that are um, unique, but they never seem too bothered by it. Um, they they step up, they rise up to the challenge, whatever it is. Like you said, we've had a couple different games where we've played with eight people. Obviously, that is you know not something that you typically prepare for. Um, you you like to obviously have more, and again, just to be able to prepare for more. But yeah, down to practice when we're even with those lower numbers, it's difficult. They never once complain about it, though. They just say we're going to give it everything we got, and and you saw that from our team this last weekend. We had players playing 45 minutes or as much as they possibly could based on foul situations, and there's no complaining. It's just let's let's give it everything we got and see what happens. Because you yeah, have bouncing back off that. I mean, you've, with these eight players and the games you've had, you really stuck in there until the end of the games, just haven't really been able to close it out. But what's what's made that effective? Again, I think it's a, a lot of the mentality of we're not gonna we're not gonna get mad, we're not gonna get upset and, and use our number of players as an excuse. We're just gonna go as hard as we possibly can. Of course we know there's things we gotta clean up. Um, and of, of course we'd love to not always be disadvantaged with our numbers like that. Um, but again, we're, we're not going to use it as an excuse. We're, we're going to show up with whoever we have, whatever we have, and play as hard as we can. Make the best of the situation that, that it, we have. Just in regards to your leadership, your veteran leadership, it seems it starts there probably with, uh, you know, Julia and, and Michaela. It, they don't seem phased, so it basically kind of just trickles down from, from those two, don't you think? Absolutely. Um, and they're two of our hardest workers. I, I think anybody that watches any of our games can see that. And so they set the tone right off the bat that we're going to play, they're going to play as hard as they possibly can. And if you have two of your senior leaders, your captains stepping out there doing that, I mean, Mick is, seems like she's putting her body on the line every single game, taking chargers, taking some of the hardest hits I've seen in a basketball game. Um, but she's willing to do it for her teammates. And so, you know, you look across or down the bench and you see her doing that, it's hard not to try and give her the same right back. So absolutely, um, our, our captains, our, our leaders are setting the tone. Yeah, Coach, do you, do you anticipate uh, getting a little, little more healthy or, or having, having any more players available for, uh, for the weekend series here uh, coming up? Um, I don't know if I want to give away that answer. Let's make Oral Roberts find that out, huh? Regarding, you know, Jacqueline Jarnett, uh, I thought at times this year was maybe just kind of looking for a moment to kind of trigger. I thought she really had a nice performance to maybe build off of against uh, Kansas City the other day. That, you know, for whatever reason, maybe just things haven't quite clicked the way we expect things to or in some of the earlier games, but maybe it start, she's starting to, to find her footing again here as you head forward in the Summit League play. Yeah, she had, a, she had a good game against Kansas City for sure. She found her shot a little bit, started knocking some shots down. Um, something we've really challenged Jacqueline with all year long is rebounding. Um, you know, she, she got in a position where she had to play a lot more four for us this last game um, and definitely see her more of as a natural three, a guard. Um, but she did a great job handling the adjustment. And of course, it, you know, matchups will dictate a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, she did. And she's someone that we, we definitely need to see, you know, stepping up and taking some of the load for us. And, you know, Julia, of course, has been a pretty consistent scorer. And, and Oz, when we're able to have her, has been good for us. But yeah, we'd love to see Jacqueline step up into that a little bit more, too.